relations on weekend vacation. We won't have it known here that we own a telephone. Hey. So Mr. Miles Davis is turning 11 today. It's a very important birthday for this cute little pug. He doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be getting a kangaroo tail, an actual bone from a kangaroo tail, as a gift later today. So that should be fun. I should do that as a live uh, Instagram live. <laughs> hey, Leah, good to see you. Hey, Emily. Hey, Marty Bronson, good to see you, man. And our guest will be joining us just a minute. It's 11.59, and I've asked him to be here right at noon. I think he entered the room. Maybe I'm going to invite him. Let's see? Aha! Hey, and our guest is here. I'm going to turn the camera around. Thank you, Miles Davis, for the free show, as always. Uh, yeah, look at that hair. Woo! Mr. It's Mark so good. Goodman. What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing? What's up, Mr. Yonley? So, Not uh, much. What a pleasure to see you. Miles Davis is going to be 12. Is that what you said? 11 today. 11. Okay. All right. What are you doing for no. the birthday? We So we've been doing a whole week. He got a brand new bed. He got a new toy. And today he will be getting a kangaroo tail. I'm not sure what that means, but it doesn't sound pleasant. <laughs> it is literally the bone from a kangaroo. Oh, an actual, okay, I thought you were going to do something to his tail. Forget it, I'll just forget it. Do you know that when we sing happy birthday at my house, like if someone has a birthday and we're singing happy birthday, the dogs come because they're expecting <laughs> treats? Just so you know. I, you know they think it's their Miles birthday. Definitely knows. Yes, Miles definitely knows the word birthday. He gets very excited. No, well, that's awesome. Happy birthday. I didn't know it was such a special yeah. occasion. You know? <laughs> it is. I saved you four miles of birthday. I guess. I mean, if I had known that, I would have backed out. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like following Savion on stage or following Michelle Dorrance on CT Squared. That's, um, you know, that's people often say, we've seen the best. What can we get next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So not only so not only did I have to follow Savion, and now I'm following Michelle Dorrance. I now have to follow a dog act. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah maybe I ought to get some like eight year olds there too. You know, get some kids. You know, that's great. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. You know, it's always terrible to follow the dog act in vaudeville because you got to watch your step. I know. That's what I'm saying, right? So I got dog <laughs> acts. I got kids. So what else? What else you want to throw at me? You know. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. So what? So what, listen, I wrote an introduction for you. Oh, good lord! So first off, I have to tell everyone uh -oh. that uh, Mark and I have a relationship going back many years now, um, and I've grown to know him quite well. And uh, so here's what I'm going to say: you literally have done almost every job that a professional dancer could do. <laughs> You've been in a concert dance company. You've yeah. done Broadway tours, national Broadway tours. You've done industrials, of course. You've had your own company. You've worked in TV and film. You've become a huge name in the conventional world. And now you own your own educational company. Um, what next? What's left? Well, when you put it like that, I mean, I could just, like, quit. I'm done. I'm out. I'm... <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> um, okay, so now just to be clear, I wasn't on a Broadway tour. Um, people think that just okay. because I love Broadway. I was on a European tour of 42nd Street. I did that. Um, so it's not quite Broadway. So I don't want to you know, misconstrue that. It I was still the talent on that show was ridiculous. Maybe. But um, and let's see what else. I guess the rest. I guess it's accurate. I don't know. What what next? I don't know, man. I'm going to be, what, 98 <laughs> next month? And I, I don't know. I mean, that seems generous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So are people, like, all tuned in right now? Because I have to, like, scrunch to see, like, who's there. There are people watching right now. Really? Oh, God. Anybody I know? 
Probably. Yeah. Oh. Our, our marketing director, Leah, who is responsible for a lot of this, she's on right now. Leah, is my voice clear? Can you type in the chat? Because I'm getting feedback on my side, but I'm wondering if that is coming through when people hear it. Oh, yeah, I can't look at that. I, can't, I have to do it like this. Ew. Uh, I can't see the, the I will tell you. The I bad. like the camera closer to your face. I, yeah. All right. <laughs> Is that good? Is that a good one? It's I don't great. Know anybody, I don't know if anybody follows my, my Facebook. Um, yes. Every morning I wake up. Look at the picture I posted on my Facebook. Every morning I wake up and that's who I look like. Just oh, my. Like, no, no. It, just, <laughs> just check it out. Because my hair, I don't know about anybody else. Not you, Mark. But my hair is like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jay Jan. I don't know if Jay Jan's here, but he knows. He knows. <laughs> So I tell you what, Mark, I'm actually, I'm going to log off and log right back on just to get a clearer connection with you, okay? Okay, that's fine. So everyone, stick around. We'll be back in about 30 seconds max. There we go. For the Tea on Tap with Mark Goodman, uh, hoping that my voice comes through a little clearer, having a little connection problem. So uh, I tried a couple things. I see Jennifer Yonley on here. Good to see you. Leah, thanks for coming back. Hopefully Mark Goodman will be back in a hot minute. Hopefully he didn't see his chance and run. I'm hoping that uh, my voice is sounding clearer and that I'm not getting feedback. So... Marty Bronson is back. Thank you, Marty. I appreciate that. Oh, good. I'm glad it sounds better. I will tell you, for any of you, <laughs> any of the rest of you doing Instagram, I closed everything on my phone, except Instagram, of course, and I turned off my Wi-Fi, so I'm strictly using my uh, cellular connection, which I think is probably more consistent. Um, so... The second that we see Mr. Mark Goodman here, we are going to get him back. It's kind of interesting, I feel like, how the past two, three months have forced us all to become techno-masters of the universe and figure out all kinds of technology that we never really had to understand before now. Um, so I guess the good thing is that... Uh, IT people will have an easier time communicating with us. And I see Mark Goodman. Hey, Kalina Miller. Hey, Philippe. Bonjour, Philippe. Ça va? Kalina, thanks for joining. It's always such a pleasure to see you. Hey, Philippe, tu habites à France, oui? All right, here we go. There we go. Hey. Are we good now? I believe we're much. Okay. I don't know. Was it, was it a problem on your end? Um, I'm going to blame you. Fine with me. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm pretty Wait, sure it was my end. No, I'm pretty All sure right. it was me. All right. Let me just so, start this. Yes. We're going we're gonna to get this started for real. So first off, uh, I always ask people, where are you right now? I am on. And can you give us a look? Yes, I'm on my screened-in porch. Oh, so here's my screened-in porch. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Can you see? We can. All right, so there's outside my backyard, neighbors, whatever. Um, here's the joy of my day right there. Hey. No. That's, that's Pasha. He's thrilled to be part of this. Um, I know it's a little nervy, like, when I throw it around, but there's my deck. It's a beautiful day in Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm. And then, can you see my floor? Oh, yeah, that's nice. There we go. So that's where I am. Ooh. Yeah, right? Love it. Yep. And show me your mug. Okay, well, so I, I'm not a mug person, so, but I do have this. <laughs> that's right. If there's any Boston peeps right there, of course, we're not going to get a season, but that's okay. So that's my thing. And I love it. It's a caffeinated drink that is inside that. Hold on. <laughs> okay, we're good. 
We're good. I have this this super eighties looking tap mug that I, I find. Well who's who are the pictures of? I is that who you knows? Know? Oh you gosh, know, no! You know the hurdler split in the middle there. What do you, what do you got? What do you, is <laughs> so that this you? person is apparently like tall and has long legs, so it's oh, definitely okay. not me. That's definitely <laughs> not you. Love you, but no, that's not you. No, no, that's, no. That's my mug. I don't. I'm not like I said. I'm just. This is. Sorry. And uh, Leah wants to know what kind of caffeinated drink is that? Truly, it's just a Dr Pepper. That's all it is. I get. <laughs> I get my six shot americano every morning at Starbucks. Iced, iced Americano and like this much sugar. Like most people will put in packets of sugar. I will put in seven <laughs> seconds of sugar. I will take the sugar thing and go one, two, three, four, until seven. So there's like, and the sugar like sits at the bottom. So when you, yes. suck, when you suck it up, you like, you taste, it's so good. Oh my God. I love it. And I will also say one of our viewers has twice now said they want you to teach a senior tech class, Mark. They teach a senior, t where, where, where? They will have to tell us that. Oh, okay. But when we were asking what's next, they said that they would love to have you teach a senior tech class. Oh, that's sweet. I'm get in touch with me. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing something, one on one type uh, called I Coach Dance. We can talk about that later. Where? Oh, we should definitely talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I do 40 minutes of content for technique, 20 minutes of choreo. They get, if they sign up, they they get all of it. They video themselves doing the choreo, send it back, I'll look at it. And then we have a one-on-one -on -one session online. Just me Mark. and that person, that's it. We go over the steps, we go over performance, technique, blah, 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 all that. So there's that, but I didn't mean to. But no, that was perfect. Whoever said that, I wanted to thank them. Do you know who it was? Does it say? Uh, well, you just make Lee, that it just went by, and they're in Long Island. Oh, who do I know in Long Island? Kathy, no. Who do I know that lives in Long Island? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been on Long Island in years. So, thank you. Thank you. We are 10 minutes into the interview and have yet to address a serious question. All right. Well, that's, you <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah, OK. Go ahead. You start. You start a serious question. I blame me. Huh? So Mark, okay. tell us about your first experience with TAP. Either the first time you remember seeing it or doing it. Well, it's different. Well, those are, those are different, right? So my first experience, uh, my mom made me not maybe, but my mom had the old movies on. So I, Gene Kelly was the first that I can actually remember going, oh, look at that, that's really cool. So if you're talking about that, then it's that memory. And what I thought was so cool was dudes dancing in loafers. And I just thought, oh my God, that's so cool. Um, so I remember that and I remember watching, I forget, it might've been Summerstock. And uh, you know, he does the paper thing and all that stuff, the newspaper thing. and. I remember saying, oh my God, he's got so much style. And my mother said something I will always remember. She goes, always go through life with a style. So that's my, that's my first actual mm. memory of like understanding that there was someone tap dancing. Do you know what I mean? Cause I didn't yeah. start actual tap dancing until well after that in college. So anyway, so that's my first, I think. Very good. Oh, bring it, bring it. What else? Come on, boy. <laughs> so tell me this, you know, I'm fascinated by lineage. Okay. Who were your teachers? Okay. And if you know, who were their teachers? Who were your grand teachers? Well, so my first teacher ever was Gay Nardone. Gay is uh, on tenure up at uh, UNH. Uh, if you live in Durham, New Hampshire, UNH stands for you need help. Um, otherwise, it's University of New Hampshire. No, because just because it's an in-state and they had to let me in, whatever. Um, so <laughs> Gay was a June Taylor dancer. She, she never stops learning, ever. She was doing her master's. She's learning drumming. She's learning everything. Um, and she was taught, you know, she's a, kind of a Boston area. So she would bring in some Leon Collins steps and Sue Ronson mm -hmm. was one of her teachers. So that lineage there, um, Boston has some great tappers, you know, and, um, uh, they had the first great Boston tapper union up there actually. And that's when I first met Cookie and Honey and Brenda and everything. But Gay is the one who launched me on this career. Um, and then she passed me off, not meaning to, but I graduated, um, off to Brenda, Brenda Buffalino at the ATDO in New York, mm -hmm. which was, ooh. So I had probably the best teachers you could have. I mean, through knowing Gay and then through working with Brenda, the people that I got to work with are, it's just stupid how good they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I'd have to be a, a complete idiot not to have absorbed good material. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Leon yeah. Collins stuff was amazing. 
Um, you know, Diane Walker's up there and she's ridiculous. And Thelma is, I mean, there's so many good tappers. And then moving to New York and joining, I was an apprentice at the HEDO. And she, Brenda would, you know, there's Gregory Hines coming downstairs. Okay, hey, look, there's Honey Coles. Hey, oh my God. It was, it was just a parade of ridiculous tappers that when you start tapping, you go, oh my God, if only I could meet this person. And then look, oh, there's Gregory Hines walking past. Oh, look, there's Honey Coles walking past. Even Sean Young, you know, Sean Young, the actress, uh, you know, uh, No Way Out and all that, and um, um, Pet Detective and all that. She yep. loved to tap and she'd come in. I'm like, oh my God, there's Sean mm. right there. So I, anyway, that's a long answer to your question. I mean, Gay Nardone is the one who I look back at and go, thank you, Gay, because she yeah. punched me on everything. And if it wasn't for her, I would not have done the Boston Tap Reunion. And if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have joined the ATDO. If it wasn't for that. So it just is, is kind of a, a, a hand me down from there. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I would say you're maybe the fourth person that I've interviewed as part of this who has cited Brenda as a primary influence. I think uh, she's one of those people that uh, people don't really understand how many people she has influenced and, and what an outsized impression she has made on the tap world. I, I've never, you know, I can tell you, I've got so many stories of ATDO, but she was tough. I mean, and she expected you to be great. I mean, and if you weren't, she'd let you know it. And it was always, it was always, you weren't, you weren't allowed to be an apprentice or in that company unless she knew you could do it, right? So yeah. it was always, get, so you either got it or you, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I don't have what's going to happen today. Um, <laughs> so you learned not only the, she's probably the best technician I have ever seen. And I'm sure there's other people out there that are, you know. Um, and she has influenced hundreds from, from there, right? Whether it's from the company or from extension from the company, or I know she's traveling all over now and her work is, uh, the breadth of her work is, is kind of staggering in all that she's yeah. done. And her visions, her, it's, it's her vision and her attention to the detail of the, the interesting story and the interesting rhythms that I don't know that I've seen anybody else really do. You know, I, I just because just, I just think she's a unique personality and artist. I just I think her mm -hmm. artistry is, and I'm, I'm, obviously I'm not you know giving you news slashes here. Her artistry is sure. amazing. Buffalo sweet? Are you kidding? When we have the buffalo things on, and and I'm looking at it, going, Brenda, what do you? What is this? I don't get it. And then we perform it, and I'd go, Oh, I got it now. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, river. I mean, there was just so much stuff. And back then, Woodpeckers was, I mean, I don't know if you want me to go on a tangent, but back then. Oh, I want you to go on it. You, the, I the, want you to tell everybody about Woodpeckers, because well, that was a unique period in tap history. It, it was. And in New York, I, this is just me. I thought all the great tappers were in New York, right? So there was ATDO and Brenda and Woodpeckers, which was this art gallery with sprung maple floors, which was the best mm. floor I have ever been on. And you'd walk in and there's art on the wall. Very simple. It was not, it was not o overly done. And like, it felt like 200 stairs down. So you just go down and there was this beautiful space and there was another one underneath. Um, and it was just, you'd walk in and you could, the smell was, oh my God, you just go, all right, let's, let's get to work. Let's tap. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all wide open. So you, you, you would be down there tapping. You couldn't close the door. So if someone was up listening and watching, like Honey Coles would be there. And he'd just stand, he'd be sitting or uh, probably sitting at the top of the stairs. And if you were down jamming, he'd just stand there and look at you. And ah. yeah, and that, that was the most nerve wracking thing ever. I mean, it's honey. Um, and the, the sound off of that floor was just, oh my God, it was, just, it was as pure as I've ever felt. But back then it was us and us, listen to me, us and uh, Manhattan Tap. So it was, there was Heather, Heather Cornell, who was, a genius in her own way and a different genius mm -hmm. than, than Brenda, right? So the two companies were just, you can't say that they were competing because they were doing completely different things. I mean, completely, but it was all in its own genius. Like Brenda has her genius. You sit down and you come up with seven part counter rhythms and let, let me see how you do. Because it's another thing that we're all sitting there, at least I'm going, Brenda, what am I, I don't get it. 
And then once you're in the middle, you're sitting in the middle of this cacophony, right? And everything just clicks and makes sense. And I don't know how they, I don't know how Brenda hears all of that stuff. So now I was not in on Heather's rehearsals, obviously, because I wasn't part of that company. But I just can't imagine another mind working the way Brenda's did. And still does, obviously. Yeah. Um, and Heather had her own brilliance. So uh, there were two competing companies that weren't competing on the same artistic plane. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and the dancers that she had, you know, with Max and Jeannie and, I mean, oh my God. And, you know, we had yeah, Barbara, Nicole Hockenberry. And, yeah, Barbara and Robin and, and Tony. Yeah. It was just, but there were days you'd walk into Woodpeckers and you know Tony was working on a grant. I don't know if anybody's ever had, had writing grants. And you just look at Tony, where <laughs> Tony, like, just in my head, I just see him behind a pile of papers at the desk going, help me. So back then, you just, you just had to write grants. There was no other way to get money other than, yeah. you know, private donors. And I know I mentioned Sean Young. She was a donor. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's my tangent. But working then back, I, I consider that kind of the golden age. There was, it was back when Broadway Dance Center was actually on Broadway, you know. Yeah. And there was LaCave, and there was Buster, and there was the jam, and... I, th I just thought all the great tappers were there. Savion was, I think, what, 15 and stupid good. And you just go, oh, my God. So, and you go to the auditions and be the same 10 people at every audition. Same guys. When it was for the guys. And there were, there were women, of course, too. But Sure. Um, yeah. And then back then, they would, they would do this launch of, like, the NBC television schedule, right? So they'd have this big um, gala type of thing. And, you know, Gregory would come in and set something on us. And, you know, so we would all do it. And it was when I, my first lesson in, in counting music in, like when you have a live band. And I always tell people, look, if you're going to count in, go slower than you think. Because he mm -hmm. set this beautiful piece on all of us. There were some diva tappers. And he went, I forget who counted us in, but they went five, six. And, oh, my God. We're halfway through and I'm looking over at somebody else and we just started laughing because we're like, I got, I got nothing. I got nothing. It was, it was so much fun. But it was at this, you know, I, I don't know if it was at the Marriott Marquis or wherever it was, but it was, and those were the days of just, oh my God, the great tappers. And, you know, Savion had a show at the, at the Delacorte Theater called Savion Glover and Friends with these primo musicians and um, just outside and the floor they had. And I just thought that was kind of the glory days. Not that mm. he's not. I, I'm just, I think because it was a smaller tap um, group. So it was yeah. tighter knit. And there was, I think there was competition within. I wanted to be better than Max. And I wanted to be better than Barbara, which will never happen, by the way. Hello. Um, and, <laughs> and I, but you would go there and go, I want to be better than Bakari. And I want to be better. You know what I mean? And so it, it made you focus. Yeah. And I think because of the, the world now, the world's become smaller, right? It's just everything's kind of spread out a little bit, but you know everybody. I'm, I'm not sure there's that same um, desire to, to, I've got to be better than you. And back then it was, there, the competition was tough, man. And I mean, I would be really, I would be jealous of Max and Jeannie and those guys because they got to improv, man. They got to go and... Um, we got to do that a little bit with Brenda, but that wasn't what Brenda was about. That's not, that's not a knock mm -hmm. on Brenda. Brenda was doing her art, and we were part of that. Yeah. It was brilliant. And I'm telling you now, and I told Brenda this, or I wrote to her or whatever, I, I pass on Brenda's teaching every day. Yeah. I find myself saying stuff that Brenda said to us. Same thing with Gay, by the way. Gay Nardone would say to us. Um, yeah. And I just go, oh, my God. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's because Brenda's technique is second to none. Second to none. You know, one of the uh, very sad consequences uh, for Chicago Tap Theater through this time is that Brenda was supposed to come during uh, Easter weekend and clean her piece, Flying Turtles, because we have the, the right to perform that piece in the Midwest, and we were going to do it in our big show in July, and I was heartbroken uh, we didn't get to have her here. That's um, right. Obviously, we're going to delay it and have her come in later. Um, sure. But, but just having time in a room with her is, you're right, it's a, it's a special thing. And just being in there, and there were some stories of, I mean, she would, she was never really satisfied because she, she would tinker. She would always tinker. Sometimes she'd tinker like an hour before the show. Um, never like big sections, but she was sure. always in search of 
I don't know if perfection is the word, but her perfection, like she's, no, that rhythm doesn't. So she was always in search. So just being in the same room with her and for you, like for your dancers, just soak up everything and just look at her eyes. Yeah. Cause there'll be times that I will look at her eyes and I go, what, what is she thinking right now? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, just cause her brain works differently. Yeah. You know, I mean, she's great artists have, have a different, I think their synapses fire a little bit differently. Do you know what I mean? Well, I think you're right. Yes. Yeah. So, they yeah. access some part of the brain. Yeah. Yeah. That we don't have access to. No, or I, that don't. I don't have access to. I, don't. I won't speak for both of us. <laughs> no, it's true though. And, and um, I soaked up a lot of stuff there. Barbara was great. Mm -hmm. um, learned so much there. Um, yeah. But I, it, I can't try to be Brenda as uh, much as I wanted to be no. back then. Um, and then I started to discover my own voice after that. And that, yes. but no matter what, within my technique and within my tap, there's Brenda and Gay every day, Yeah, every day. Is there anything that a mentor has said to you that has really stuck with you? Well, there's a few things um, and I'll say it quick. Um, my, I had been tapping at UNH for a few years and I didn't know how good I was. I didn't know if I was any good or not. And we're going down to the Great Boston Tap Reunion. So this is the first time that I'm going to be around the divas, the people that you look at and go, oh. And we're driving down, and it's about a 45-minute drive. And I'm sitting next to Gay in the car. And I'm like this. I'm like, OK, 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 OK. And I'm just like this. And she stopped. And she, Gay never gave out compliments that were always like, oh, you're so good. That's not her. That's just not her style. But she was always encouraging. Do you know what I mean? And she mm -hmm. said, Mark, you're going to impress a lot of people because you're really good. So just calm down. Mm. And I will. That was. That was just one of those moments where, you know, your mentor says you're good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was the first time I'd really heard it because I would go um, and tap on my own. I would break into the new the studio at school. You take a hanger and you can break into the studio and I tap <laughs> and I'd come in one week and say, "Gay, hey, here's here's a step. And she'd look at me and she'd go, that's great. Bring me something else next week. It wasn't, <laughs> oh, you're so good. It was amazing. It was always that kind of encouragement. So that's number one. Number two, what I always remember from Brenda was I was doing a trick step of hers or something. And she said, Mark, you're making it look too easy. It's a trick step. It needs to look different. <laughs> and I've, I've always remembered that. And I see people who make stuff look so easy, which is always the, the thing. But when you have a trick step, sure. you know, fancy it up a little bit. And then... Yeah. Um, the thing that I heard from Gregory, we were up in Poughkeepsie with Brenda and Gregory, and I had to leave. So I go give him a hug and he gives me a hug and a kiss on the cheek and say, keep at it, man. You got the feeling. Now that's mm. Gregory Hines. And he was this, uh, he's, he's a God, right? To us, at least to me. And I find out later yep. that he might've said that to some other people. I don't care. He said it to me and it sounded so personal that, that, I lived on that uh, up until yesterday. Mm. It, it's been that, I just think about that all the time. So I yeah. kind of use those lessons and I try to pass that on to some people that I think are really, they have the right idea. So those are the yeah. three. I couldn't narrow it down to one, I'm sorry. No, that's beautiful. I, please, I could listen to those stories forever. <laughs> Tell me this, what you know, technique is the term that dancers throw around an awful lot? Um, but I feel like technique is maybe a more open for interpretation word within tap dance. What, is ta what does technique mean to you within the context of tap dance? Well, for me, it, like if I break it down to what it is, I would define it as like the repetition of rudiments that lead to consistency and clarity. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? So technique starts with what you were taught and that's your specific technique, right? Um, and then the mass of that is the repetition and the repetition and the repetition of doing it, number one, so that it becomes rote and there it is. And then it leads to the, the consistency, like your base, like it's your, it's, like, it's your foundation, right? So it's like if a building is built on a strong, you know, brick foundation, that's your technique. And then mm. from, up from that is when you can start to ornament it and bring yourself, but without that technique underneath. Now that's, I'm not sure that's specific to tap, clarity is, but I just think the technique is always the repetition of the rudiments of whatever 
form you're doing, whether it's jazz, ballet, hip hop, it could be bricklaying, it could be painting, it doesn't matter. It's the repetition of that that you consider the rudiments that lead to the consistency and the clarity. That Love it. I want you to know both Jason Janis and Bakari gave you an affirmative on what you just said. Did they really? Yeah, they did. They did. I would not lie to you. <laughs> I mean, I would. <laughs> yeah, you would. Don't even, don't even lie to the people. You would lie to me. Don't you? Hey, everyone, Mark would lie to me flat out. You know, <laughs> I would. I would. would lie to me. <laughs> but Bakari and Jason Janis would not. They would not. They would not. You're no. right. So, uh, have you ever had to come back from a major injury? <laughs> yeah. Or I've, had, I've had to come back from two. The main one, um, I have a ruptured disc. I was in my senior year in college, and I had a girl on piggyback. And her boyfriend, Dieter, was his name. He said, why don't you try to pull her up to your shoulders? And I'm like, all right. So I bump her up, and I guess she weighed less. And she went over my head, and I dove in underneath her, and she landed right on my back. And about two weeks later, I couldn't move. So I had a ruptured disc. Um, and back then, they, they, even the doctors said, number one, she didn't know how I was up and out and about, because it was pretty bad. And they, they said surgery was even less than 50-50. So they treated it conservatively. So I had to go in to get what's called a steroid block where they inject cortisone and then Novocaine. Well, they missed the epidural spot. They hit the subdural spot and everything went up my spine into my head. <sighs> I had more pain that day than I have ever experienced. I would move my head this much and the pain was in the bone in my skull. It was, it was bizarre. Um, <clears throat> moving on, I then moved to New York um, after I, okay, so here I'll move, sorry. I had to lay down for three months and then I was allowed to sit up for a month and then I could get up and go. Um, so I was in this little tiny apartment, like just prone on my back. I could only get up to use the bathroom and maybe eat. Um, my mom hired people to come in. Um, so then I finally got up, moved to New York and I had to swim every day for 18 months. I never want to see another indoor pool ever again. So I would strengthen the muscles is what they were trying to do. So I'd do the stationary bike and I would do that. Um, and it worked and I got back to tapping and then um, things were pretty good. And then I moved to LA and I got back to playing soccer because I'm a soccer player. And I was playing on this LA soccer team for a while. And one day at a charity game, I went up for a head ball and it just went and I just fell down. I went home, okay, it was in so much pain. And I, you have to picture this. So I'm on the floor of my house. My, I'm on my left hip and my right foot is up on the TV stand. This is the only way I could get comfort. And my wife walks in, she goes, what the hell are you doing? She goes, you need to go now. So I went to my chiropractor first and he said, he looked at the x-ray and goes, I am not touching you right now, go. So um, long story short, in 2007, I finally had to have the disc removed. So I had a microdiscectomy. Um, that was what, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and I've been good. I've been good. So anyway, that's a long story. But that was, that injury has defined my adult life. Wow. That was a tough one. That and, was really and yet, you, here you are, dancing yep. daily, yep. better than you ever have, it's, I yeah. assume. I mean, well, it's the funny thing is, and I think everyone who's ever had an injury will know, sometimes you compensate and good stuff happens, right? Like, mm. you discover a different technique or a different way of doing something or a way that's easier on your body. So that even, and I always try to look effortless, right? Uh, that's my yeah. goal. And sometimes you would look effortless just because you didn't want to hurt yourself. Um, yeah. I had meniscus surgery a year ago, but that does not compare to my disc. The disc was, you know, the radiating pain down the leg and the burning and the, oh, that was awful. That was just an awful time. So anyway. Mm. So, uh, do you mind? I know that you've had that the very unique experience to get to perform uh, in shows with people like Buster Brown and Sam Manson yeah. and Gregory Hines. Yeah. I know especially for the younger tap dancers or maybe tap dancers in other countries that didn't get to experience that generation of tap dancers. Do you have any anecdotes that you can share with us? Well, I have a few. I mean, I'll give you an overall view. Like, what I loved about them is they, you wouldn't sit and talk tap. Like, Buster and Sandman, they would just shoot the breeze. Gregory, I remember Gregory, because he would come to Woodpeckers a lot, and we'd sit, we, you know, we'd all sit in the office, and he's got Barbara there, and we're just chatting. And I remember him talking to me a couple times, saying, I, 
I don't want to be remembered as a tapper. I want to be remembered as a, as an entertainer, um, which I always loved. This is why he did, yeah. you know, um, that movie with Willem Dafoe, that uh, Vietnam War thing. And um, he did um, Running Scare with Billy Crystal and all that. But Buster and Sandman, I remember working with them here, as a matter of fact, my first big solo gig. I get a call from Savion's agent, Carol. And she goes, look, I need a replacement quick. It's in North Carolina, ADF, you're on the, you're on the thing with uh, Buster Sandman and Savion. Now, at this point, I never met Carol. And I literally, the first words out of my mouth, and this doesn't, I hope this doesn't sound bad. I said, Carol, you know I'm white. I mean, I'll be the only white tapper. <laughs> she goes, no, no, Savion vouches for you, you're good. So I go down there and I have Savion stories. All Savion then wanted to do was play basketball, that's it. We got in a cab and drove 45 minutes to a sports store just so he could get a basketball. And we would go shoot hoops. And um, one, one of the times I played horse with him and I said, all right, if I beat you tonight, you're doing a stair dance. And I beat him, <laughs> he had to do a stair dance. And then he got me back because he said, all right, good man, tonight, all new, everything new. You can't go do any of your old stuff. It all has to be new. Now, my ego said, sure, I'll do that. <laughs> and okay i had to follow savion following savion sucks by the way but he goes out and does everything new i mean it was brilliant i went out and did everything new for 11 and a half seconds and then i fell back on all my old stuff i failed <laughs> um but buster and sandman during rehearsals they were just sitting there playing cards so they're just this they're doing this they're not even talking right like this and <laughs> Sandman, I don't know what the argument was. Sandman goes like this. He goes, mother God, God, I just got to buy God. And he walks out of the room. So he walks out of the room, and I swear, I promise you, Buster never moved. He's here looking at his cards like this. And like three minutes later, Sandman just comes back in like this. Sits down, throws down a card, and they just carried on playing cards like nothing. <laughs> it was, it was so cool. I, and you know, Buster on stage, I, he, I learned so much from Buster because I couldn't compete with Savion's feet. I mean, I, I'm not Savion. Are you kidding me, that guy? I, and yeah. so, so many people had much better feet than me. So one day at the ADF, at that thing, I did something. Someone said something in the crowd like, I like that step. And I just shouted out, well, then say something. And everyone started laughing. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. Let's make people laugh. So it actually started me and I would watch Buster because Buster would interact with the crowd and he had just had this personality that you would just go, oh, love it. Um, at that moment, at that point, uh, Sandman's, Sandman's feet weren't what they used to be, um, but he still did all his old shtick. He did, yeah. he would, and they were just, they're just fun to be around, you know, all the, all the old hoofers. And it wasn't, hey, let's tap, let's talk tap, let's talk tap. Um, and like, if you went to, uh, the jam in New York at La Cava or wherever, um, it was just guys just hanging out, you know? And, yeah. um, we did sushi on tap out in LA. There was a sushi restaurant that loved tap dancers. Chance Taylor was there. And, uh, he did, <laughs> if you've never had a chance to watch Chance, you should. Cause he was, he's in yeah. tap. He's in the movie tap. He's the first one that when they, at the construction site, they put down the board. And he, does, he goes out and does this little thing with his foot. That's Chance. And he broke a window at Sushi on Tap because he was just in his own world. So he's tapping, he jumps up, and he hits the windowsill, and whoosh, the window just shattered. I'm like, oh, that's great. I'll, I'll be paying for that. Um, <laughs> but it was being around those guys. Um, mm. I just wanted to be around Gregory. I just, I just, even if he was on the other side of the room, um, yeah. just – to so I mean you meet your idol I mean come on how many times you get to meet not only him but honey honey I, I, I mean honey is just probably the finest tapper I've ever seen I, I, I would I would watch honey for different reasons than I would watch Gregory I would yeah. watch Gregory because it just came out of him and it was it was never and if you by the way this is for the kids now it was never tricks it was never about how many over the tops can you do how many triple wings you, you know okay the Condos Brothers, they, they could do their five-point wings, okay? But it was for all the other hoofers, it was never about that. It was about entertainment and style. I don't ever remember Gregory doing tricks except for one little toe stand that he would always do. Um, yeah. So it was rhythm, and it was, it was two in a break or three in a break, so it was all musicianship. 
Um, and so you just, I would just watch them and go, oh my, it was just, it was just beautiful. And I would watch honey because honey moves like you put butter on a hot stove and just watch it move. <laughs> and, uh, and the style, I mean, he was, he felt like he's eight feet tall. And he's just tall, lean, and just, he was just a beautiful man. And he was just move. So anybody who's never seen the world's slowest soft shoe uh, with him and uh, Charlie Atkins, who was another wonderful mm -hmm. dapper, just, just Google it or YouTube it. It'll never be the same as watching it. Um, but they, that would be one like performance that I would love to go back. I would love to be in the crowd that day that they debuted Taking a Chance on Love, uh, mm -hmm. to off shoe, and just watching them go, the control that they had yeah. was, was ridiculous. Their control was ridiculous. And it was yeah. just beautiful. And none of it was about how fast can I go? And how it, it was just these rhythmic changes that, that you think are so simple. So I learned from them about the simplicity that is necessary. That, that's, mm. that was a long, I went way out on a tangent, Mark. I'm sorry. Oh, was, no, I love it. How many, how many people clicked off while I was talking about that? Tell me. Well, there's, I mean, the good news is there's at least still one person watching. And is that my wife? <laughs> no, she left a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Bring, what else? I'm ready. Come on. Uh, okay, so you, I feel like we always hear those stories about getting paid exorbitant fees to perform for celebrities, right, at, at private events. You tap dance for Carlos Santana. I have to ask you, first off, what song did you dance to? Did you pick a Santana tune? And B, what was that like? It was, I believe, you know, it's funny, I'm trying to remember. I think it was just, a, it was... Uh, like a bridge section of uh, Black Magic Woman. I, 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 mm. and, the, and the musicians were just, now Carlos was not performing, it was his birthday. He was sitting watching, all right? So what I remember about that, first of all, I'm looking at Carlos Santana and I'm like, you know, I'm like this, right? Yeah. He was a Buddhist or is a Buddhist. And I knew a guy who was very big in um, the, the Buddhist society out there. And I said, look, we're doing this thing for him. Would you please come and tap? And I'm like, Carlos Santana has no idea who the hell I am, but sure, I'll do it. Um, and he, you know, he gave me this really nice applause. And um, I, re I, the funny thing about that is I remember my rehearsal being much better than the actual show. Is that bad? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe JJ and Bakari can tell. Like, we I all know that feeling. I, I think I've come off stage one time in my life and I went, okay, nailed it, got it. That was good. Every yeah. other time I come off and go, hey, that, oh, shoot, I should have done this. Or, oh, I missed that sound. But I remember like most of my rehearsals, I was crushing it, all my rehearsals. And then I get on stage and you know, nothing bad would happen, but I never feel like it was as good as my rehearsal. I don't know, yeah. I don't know. But um, he was such a nice man, but I got to work. I mean, Dick Van Dyke was the nicest guy ever. Mm. Um, and this, that was a director's guild thing and none of it was being paid, it was all why, why would I want to get paid if, I'm, if Carlos Santana's watching me or Dick Van Dyke is on the same stage as me, right? Or whatever it is. In fact, I remember performing and I literally said out loud, I said, Dick freaking Van Dyke is right there. I, it was, <laughs> oh my God. And he could not have been nicer. He was a true, mm -hmm. just a truly nice man. I've been really lucky. There, there, I don't remember yeah. anybody. No, that's not true. I remember a few people not being really cool, but. <laughs> you know, like, and another guy who was great, Harry Hamlin, he was getting ready to go into mm. um, Chicago. And he goes, I want to tap. And he was, so I would just go meet him and we would tap. And um, he was actually, he was actually pretty good. He really was. Um, and all the stuff we worked on, he never used. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> like, damn. But those experiences are so cool, you know? Yeah. I mean, and I, you, okay, I've got a New York story. This is a New York story. I don't care. I'm moving you, whatever. Do it. I'm, I was dating a girl who was, her father was really wealthy, this Mexican guy, was whatever. So we would always go to these fancy restaurants. So we went to this one Chinese restaurant, no sign, nothing. You had to know about it. And um, in the middle of dinner, I get up and do an improv happy birthday. And I'm like, happy birthday to you, whatever. And this one guy is sitting at a table and he gets up and he comes over, puts his arm around me and said, let's do that again. So he starts singing happy birthday. 
It's James Ingram. And I don't know if anybody knows who James Ingram was, but beautiful voice. Um, and I just got to jam while James Ingram is singing Happy Birthday Acapella. And up in the corner is a bald um, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper is just standing <laughs> up in the corner. These, these stories, like New York stories, right? Or LA yeah. stories that I have. I've, I've been so, I, I don't use the term blessed very much, I, I, but I'm, I am, I'm, oh my gosh. So. Well, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and, and say that a certain amount of talent, preparation, um, charm, maybe, I don't know, I hate to use that word. Yeah, don't use it for uh, me. Right but there, no, there, I, right I, would be the, I would be the first to say that you have deserved everything you've achieved. I will say that without sarcasm. Well, I appreciate that. I, I mean, I just... Yeah. Um, well, I mean it. You know, one of the questions um, I get asked is, you know, how did you find TAP? And I'm like, you know, what, or how did you fall in love with TAP? I'm like, TAP fell in love with me first. And I'm a follower. Mm. I'm like, the first girl that ever mm. said she liked me, guess what? I followed her around like a kitten. Tap. I discovered that I could get better within that hour and I could see my improvement. I'm like, let's do this. Okay, here we go. And I was smart enough, I think, to go, all right, let's see what happens. I didn't know it was going to lead to this, mm. to me making a living tapping. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Yeah. How, I, that's why people ask me, I will, I will never complain about my life. Never. Yeah. I may say, look, I'm tired today or I'm sore, but I get, I get paid to put on my tap shoes. I mean, come on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, what else? Bring it on, Mark. Come on. I'm ready. Well, so listen, I, one of the things that I appreciate is that uh, there's been quite a sea change in the past, I would say, 20 years. And the relationship between what I would call kind of the jazz tap world or the rhythm, what we used to call rhythm tap, and then kind of what was happening in all the dance studios in America. And there used to be this real disconnect where you know, what you would see coming out of every studio in America practically, and then what you would see the professional tap community do were miles apart. They were so oh, different. Yeah. They almost had nothing in common other than a flap and a shuffle and a cramp roll. That, I feel like we have seen do this. And yeah, it is yeah. now, I, like you, judge, and I know that it, when I go to a competition now, 90% of the tap dances I see are rooted in what we used to call rhythm tap, yep. vocabulary, ideology, the performative style. Yep. Um, I credit a lot of that to the fact that there have been a few in our community who have started teaching at conventions mm -hmm. and judging at the competitions right. and bringing our knowledge base to those people. You are one of those that have, has been the most successful. I've been um, really lucky. I mean, I, I was one of the first you know, hoofers. I didn't know about convention. I had no idea. So this woman, Linda Diamond, saw me teaching at Broadway Dance Center and said, I like your stuff. We need a sub this weekend. Can you come? I'm like, sure, I'll go, whatever. So I went to Minneapolis and I did this thing. And I was like, oh my God, this is a, there's 400 kids in the room. So I didn't know about it. Um, and back then the tappers weren't, most of them weren't just tappers. They were, I've taken some tap, but I'm only do jazz. And it was, it's, it was a struggle. That was 95, I think. Uh, John and Alan from uh, West Coast Dance gave me my, my first chance. But it was a struggle every, every week to get more respect for tap. And I would talk about rhythm and I would talk and some of these people would look at me and go, no, it's not what we do. Um, so, but slowly we got a little bit more respect for tap, right? Um, there is still not a disconnect, but there's still the two schools that now because we have people like, um, you know, Ayadeli did it, Jay Jan's doing it, Sarah's doing it somewhat, that these people are now out there. And now I, what I want to do is educate these people who love tap, but didn't understand how great the art form could be. Mm -hmm. And now that I think they understand that it's more than just making noise and going here with your arms, right? That there's a yeah. much deeper appreciation for it. Um, but back then it was, it was a struggle getting respect. Um, but it, there was, I mean, I went through, and I still go through sometimes, what if I had stuck to just being a hoofer? And that's it. And I didn't do the convention. I don't know. I wouldn't have my beautiful wife and kids probably, and I wouldn't. So there's, but there were times I would lament it going, God, you know, I could have been a really great hoofer. I don't know. Yeah. I, that, I don't, that sounds egotistical. I don't mean that. I mean, that's how my head works. I know what you mean. And, um, but I get to educate all these kids now 
and starting them younger. And I think a lot of the studios have gone, all right, we see the value in that because it's all rhythm. And JJ, and you can tell me, he'll tell you flat out when we're judging, and you can too, you can tell instantly based on people's um, uh, overall musicality if they value tap at their studio. Without yeah. a doubt. I mean, you Without can look at it, not doing tap, doing contemporary or, or whatever. Yeah. And you go, wait a minute, you're not really with the music. I mean, I don't, you know what I mean? So, um, but that's changing. I mean, the, the last probably 10 years has changed a lot. But the first, I've been on convention now for 20, 25 years. I don't know, a long time. Um, and it's, it's, been, it's been great to see. You, back in, no one would bring a tap floor back then. They think you were crazy. And now all these numbers, you know, Anthony's doing such great work. And um, there's so much great tap out there that it's been really fun to see. And there's still yeah. a stigma, right? Like in the, the, the quote, hoofing world. There's still like the oh, old yeah. school who go, no, 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 that's not real tap. I still get that. Yep. But you know what? I'm trying to spread the word. I mean, that's what we're all trying to do, right? I mean, Bakari's doing it, JJ and you, like I said, Sarah, yep. uh, Jeannie, everybody, we're just trying to spread the word. That's right. Yeah, I just, I just never believe that tap should be exclusive. Some people believe, look, um, you've got to suffer, you've got to do this, you got, but why can't, why can't you just include people that just, love to hear the sound, you know? Because if you, 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 I, I mean, I have kids, when they were two, they were just doing this with their feet. It's a natural thing to make rhythm. Yeah. So why would you go, no, 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 you can't do that. You're not, you're not suffering. Enough. I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, yeah. So first off, I'm gonna warn people that if we hit the hour mark, oh. we will be cut off, but then we will immediately reconnect. Okay. So make sure you look for us if we get cut off. So I have one more kind of, uh, I have two more questions before we get to the two minute tap class. Um, tell us about working with Robert Zemeckis and Tom Hanks on Polar Express. How did you snag that job, first of all? And then what were the logistics of filming uh, with a motion capture suit on? Well, I mean- Yes, Thelma. Thelma Goldberg just wrote, good tap is good tap. Yeah, thank you, Thelma. Well, Thelma, Thelma. knows me, come on. Thelma, yeah, sure just, someone else is passing it on, right? Um, yeah. The so yeah, tell us about Polar Express. So I auditioned, you would go in, and what I loved is they just put on hot chocolate and said, just jam to it, which was great. I didn't have to learn anything. And I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And then they had somebody who could not pick up steps. And they said, Mark, we want you to come in. So I just, I started doing it. Um, and Mark Mendonca, and I, it was, it was actually really fun. Um, and I don't want to mention the choreographer because he wasn't a great tapper. And he would try to do stuff that just didn't quite make sense. So we would all try to help. And so we'd get there at 6 a.m. at Sony Studios and we would just get there. And, and like Mark would just, it was like a master class every day. Mark and mm. um, Josh Eli, they would just tap. Um, and Michael Jeter, you know, who unfortunately passed away, he was just a wonderful performer. He wanted to learn tap. But um, Tom Hanks could not have been nicer to us. Uh, we, they originally had eight dancers that cut it down to four because the computer people, could just fix it all. In fact, after one of the sessions, they said, all right, guys, come in. And they would show us on the computer, here's what we just saw, and here's what we could do. They go, click. And what they could do just on the computer to make four people, eight people, having us do flips, having us do, I didn't do the flips. That was Andy Pellick. Andy Pellick did the, the flips, and they filmed it, and then put it on all of us. And Andy Pellick, ah. another just genius dancer. Um, so we'd get there at 6 a.m., and I got to be on set it was supposed to be five days and it turned out to be three weeks. Um, and you, oh. they said you could always tell the budget of a movie based on the, the, uh, the, the uh, catering and the catering was ridiculous. I think the budget was 150 million or something. So you'd go, you'd put on your tight suit and you'd have pickups. Uh, the main characters had 50 pickups all over their faces so they could capture all the thing. We only had five or six and we had pickups down here. And you'd walk into the filming to the studio and there was this scaffolding and there were, I think, probably 20 computers up there. And you would do it all with a bare set with just a little like um, metal bars that would be the, the train cars. And they put on the music and there you went. Um, there was one moment where Tom Hanks is supposed to pull the, the door open because he goes, anyone in need of some refreshment and they're supposed to open the door. And he, he couldn't get it open. But I was first one out and I had to go out and I went, boom. 
my ribs right into the bar and went right down the floor. And I promise you, Tom Hanks, he's like this. He's standing over me like this going, you all right? And so we just had to <laughs> it. It was so funny. But he bought, he bought all the dancers lotto tickets. Um, I won 50 bucks. I did. It was awesome. And he would bring in the coffee bean and tea leaf truck for all of us. And just beginning mm -hmm. to go to Sony Studios was an experience that I will never, ever, ever forget. Um, and there are, there are things that I, I wish I'd done differently. You know, I wish I was uh, a little bit more open um, to the overall experience, like looking around mm -hmm. and going, wait a minute, how lucky am I? Because I think a lot of my, my uh, thing was I didn't realize how lucky I was until after filming was done. I remember being down there going, oh, my God, it's Tom Hanks. And what he and Zemeckis would do, they'd be sitting and they'd be just be talking and go, yeah, politics and president and this. And he goes, you ready to shoot? He goes, yeah, all right. And they just get up and start shooting the scene. I mean, and Tom Hanks, uh, you know, my friend Michael Malley, I don't know if anybody knows Mike, I went to school with Mike, and he did uh, Sully, the movie Sully. Um, and he said the same thing, and everyone says the same thing. Tom Hanks is the nicest, uh, most unassuming dude ever. Just the coolest dude. You could just sit and talk to him. We didn't, but you could, you know. Um, Love it. Yeah, anyway, so there was that. So I'm going to cut, well, no, I have one more question, then I'm going to cut a song. And then we'll be right back to make sure you all come back. When we get back, we will have the first ever Tea on Tap giveaway, <laughs> courtesy of Mark Goodman. So you're going to want to make sure to come back. Before we take our break, tell everybody about this shirt that I'm wearing. Yeah. And about this amazing company that you've started. Yes. Uh, Tell but, us about this, about Totally Tap and Tap University and, and what you do. Tap University was originally started, uh, me and Marcy Tuttle, who, who runs Star Systems. We don't talk anymore, but it doesn't matter. I was talking about how I want to educate the people that love Tap but may not know all mm -hmm. the. That's how it started. I wanted to get the word out about how great Tap is. So I expected mostly convention kids. Um, and I've got a lot of convention kids and some hoofers. And I just, at the time, I just brought in my favorite people. I brought in Max, I brought in Olivia. Um, Jeannie, I'd love Jeannie Hill, and I just wanted them to share their knowledge. So it started small. Um, and it's still it's still small, but it's 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 got a strong foundation. And I just I think the people that I bring in, like like you, uh, are really rooted in education, and not just hey here are the steps. It's here are the steps, and here's how you do the steps. Because you know you know Mark and a lot of people, JJ and Bakari, you know there are show offs out there. There are people that go here do it this way that won't show you how to do it. The people I bring in, I think, know how. So I wanted to get people to spread the word about how great the art form is by showing them how to approach the art form, not just, hey, go make noise and do it. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I saw these convention kids. We, I remember one time up in Minnesota, I got into this jam and I said, all right, here's the music. And this one kid went on really cool feet. He stopped on a like a six. And I said, do you know what count you're on? He goes, no, nah, I don't care. I'm like, okay. Because they just didn't know how to count. That, yeah. that drives me nuts. But it was more about let's get all these other people into our community that can yeah. that love tap but don't know how great it can be. Anyway. Well, and, and Mark, I'm going to step in here because some, a lot of people may not know exactly how Totally Tap works. It's essentially a one or two day tap festival that it – that Mark brings to your studio, right? Where in one or two days, occasionally, you will have Lisa Latouche, Max Pollock, Jason Janis, yep, myself, yep, you, um, and the kids can take from all these features. And it ends. What I love about it, it ends every time with a tap jam. And it's not just put on music and everybody go. It's Explaining to the kids how a jam works. Right. It's explaining the basics of counting, blues form, standard song form, uh, creating a framework for them to have a greater appreciation of what it really means when we improvise. That it isn't just, here's some music, let's do a bunch of steps. Right. Um, so I want to make sure that people understand what a cool thing it is you made, because it is unique. I, I do a lot of different jobs for different people. Uh, and the work I do for you is always some of my favorite all year. Um, because you have created a framework to allow that. And you hire people that I love. Yeah, well, I mean, I think everything is about who you hire, right? And I've gone through, there's some people that I, that I, that I sorry, my dog just came out, um, that, that <laughs> I, I liked what they were doing, but I didn't like the message. 
and I don't use sure. them anymore. I, there's nothing against yeah. them. But like you and JJ and Lisa, who uh, guys, Lisa Latouche, go take with her wherever she takes. Ah. Um, and it was, it's, it's hiring great people that have kind of the same mindset as on how to disperse information. Um, and I just think we have fun. I just, I try to make it as, mm -hmm. as loose and fun. If people are interested, all I need is a studio to call and say, all right, what do I need to host? Because it's, so I, yeah. I don't go out and advertise too much. I just go, if you want us, mm -hmm. let me know. Here's the, the, the numbers I need and I'll take care of everything. Um, so if you, whatever. Um, but yeah, I just, I, well, I appreciate that. I just, like I said, I just, I try to put it, I try to put things in with my personality, which I think are just, let's go have some fun, right? Yeah. Anyway, so the people that have been part of it, I'm, I'm very appreciative to, you know, Lynn Schwab and, and you know, all these just wonderful, wonderful tappers that, that all have a, a different message saying the same thing. Yeah. How wonderful it can be, right? Anyway. Yeah. So we've gone way over. Is that it? Do I, am I the first one that's gone way over? Oh, gosh, no. Okay. Oh, no. So I just, I'll just talk. Oh, no. We, we've had an episode go an hour and a half long. Oh, okay. So oh, and we have about 15 minutes ahead of us, I would say. Okay. So I'm going to cut us off, and then we're going to pop right back in. So please, everybody, uh, look for us in about 15 seconds. Hey, there I am. So, yes, this is Mark Yonley, and we are back. We're going to finish the last 15, 20 minutes of this episode of the Tea on Tap. I have changed phones. I am now on Jennifer Yonley's iPhone, my lovely wife. Uh, so hopefully that clears up the voice issue. I really do not know why we're getting uh, that kind of weird audio effect on my voice, but I'm going to say it's probably gremlins. Hey, Emma. I feel like I saw Molly. Hey, Katie. Hey. I know Leah's probably on here. So the second we see Mark, I will be adding him back in. And as I said, coming up, we have my two favorite parts. We're gonna have our two minute tap class with Mark Goodman. We're going to have a uh, the rapid riffs and we're gonna have our giveaway. Oh. Hey. Are we good? Oh, good. My voice sounds so much clearer, right? Oh, no, it really does. Yeah. I, I am, I, you know, I hate to say this. I am now on my wife's iPhone instead of my Android phone. Well, there you go. That'll teach you. <laughs> why, don't, you know, why don't you join the rest of the, 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 uh, the generation and get, a, get an iPhone? You know what I'm saying? I probably just pissed off half of the people watching, but okay. <laughs> That's all right. All right, what are we doing? Let's do it. What do we got? Uh, first off, uh, let's do our giveaway. Okay. So here's what I thought I would do, if everyone can hear me. You can hear me, right? I can hear you. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's out there anymore. I just want to see who can do this. I, in order to win, you have to be the first to name either my favorite Gene Kelly dance, and I'll give you a hint, it's a solo, or my favorite Fred Astaire dance, I'll give you a hint, it's a duo, and it is not with Ginger Rogers. Bam. So you can drop your answers in the comments here, and the first one to get it right, what are they going to win, Mark? They're going to win one of my shirts. One of the, one of the I'm tapping, and as you walk away, you're still tapping. Yes. My cousin, it's my cousin uh, has a company called Still Tees, so everything is still. So I'm, I'm walking, still walking. I'm dancing, still dancing. So I have one for babies that says I'm pooping. Yes, still pooping. Whatever. So, um, so stilltees.com, I think, is what it is. And they, so, but let's see. Uh, begin the beginning. No, although I, that is a beautiful dance with Eleanor Powell. I think that's, it's just gorgeous. By I'm way, not sure Apple friend. iPhones are so great. Who just said that? <laughs> that yeah, that would be our marketing director. I love that's very funny. Um, believe me, I have seriously been considering swapping uh, and moving to the Apple side. I've never uh, had another phone, so I don't, I don't know. It is not lovely day. Mm, I like these guesses, though. No, they're good. Now, I will tell you, okay, I'll give you this hint. They are both not the first movies you think about when you think Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire. Oh, there you go. So it's definitely not Moses Supposes. I don't know you anymore. <laughs> that was awesome. Whoever said, I don't know you anymore. I didn't see who it was. I love that response. I've actually told people before, my favorite. Um, should I drop another hint? Oh, see if I, 
Oh, so one of them is from the Gene Kelly movie that is so underrated. Um, can anyone name like the most underrated Gene Kelly movie? Do you know, Mark? Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I actually went to Inherit the Wind. <laughs> what is wrong with you? So many okay, things. so I'm going to change it. The first person that can tell me what is wrong with Mark Yonley wins my shirt. <laughs> it is not Anchors Away. Ooh, good guess, Selma. Yeah, it really I is. I love these guesses, though. Yes. Um, so uh, how could I put this? So <laughs> I'm just trying to. Ooh, Christine says squeaky floor routine. That's from Summerstock. Is that the Summerstock one? That, it's a beautiful routine, but it is not. Um, how can I put this? Um, the, the, the Fred Astaire, what does that say? <laughs> Doesn't. Very funny, Claire. From Summerstock. Yeah, I was right. Thank you. Um, uh, how can I put this? The Fred Astaire is not a typical hoofing number. Mm. And the Gene Kelly, this will give it away, is not. Oh, who, who just said it's always fair weather? Who said that? That's Kathy, I think, from Long Island, isn't it? All right. So what is the, what is the dance in It's Always Fair Weather that he does that is just brilliant? Oh, yes, yeah, Sammy. You got it. I like myself. That's it. That's the roller skating number. Oh, Lee. Sorry. Sammy got it. So can you get her info for me? And I'll send her a shirt? I mean, I guess I could. <laughs> yes. Sammy, do me a favor. Uh, direct message me or Chicago Top Theater, and we will take care of that. So um, in um, Always Fair Weather, I Like Myself is just, it's just brilliant what he does. Um, the Fred Astaire number that's my favorite is how can you believe me when I said I love you when you know I've been a liar all my life? It's a vaudeville number with, with uh, Jane Powell in Royal Wedding. Oh. And it is, it's just, I love it because it's all style. It's so stylistic and it's so amazing that uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Anyway, Sammy, good work. So, Mr. Goodman, this is a lot of people's favorite part. And tell me. I was about to say, historically, we <laughs> send people. <laughs> It is time for the two-minute tap class. You have two minutes to teach any step, idea, or concept. Two minutes. Go. Okay. I'm going to go way down here, so let's see if you can see my feet. Only feet, right? All right, so this is just a, it's just a fun little rhythm. Um, are you timing me right now? Go. Go. Okay. So you're going to drop a toe. Toe, shuffle, toe, touch, toe, flush, toe, step. There we go. So one E and a two and three and four. Five, six, seven, and one and two and three and four and a uh, five e and a uh, six. Now you're gonna drop toes, brush toe, shuffle toe, step, heel step. We're gonna go over this again. I go one and a two and three and four and a uh, five e and a uh, six e and a uh, seven and a uh, eight. Or if you count like a tap dancer, you can count it in four, right? So we go. One E and a two and three and four and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four. A tempo. One, two, three, we go. She da, 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 da. And then you just go to the Ooh. other side. So the other, it's just it's just a time step, right? So the other side. Da, 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 da. So what I like about this is the toe drops. They're all toe drops. Toe shuffle, toe touch, toe brush, toe step. Heel dig, brush, heel drop, uh, dig. Now these are toe drops. Brush, toe, shuffle, toe, heel, tap, drop. Left side, one, two, three, we go. One E and a two, and three and four, and a one E and a two, and a three and a four. If you can cross those, that would be really helpful. So mm. um, I will do it here, I'll do it this way. So I go uh, up tempo a little bit. One, two, three, four. One E and a two, and three and four. The break. How am I doing on time, Mark? How much do I have? You're doing great. Okay. I would not cut this off. This is gold. This okay. is beautiful. The, uh, the break is simple. Here's the, the hard part is going from that heel back to the toe. So I go one e and a two and three and four and one e and a two and three and four and. So that break, two, ready, and one e and a two and three and step, heel, one e and a two.
and then we finish it out. So we do two long and two short. Good luck. Here we go. One, two, three, and. Yes, I missed the shuffle. Shut up, Mark. All right, let's finish it out. <laughs> let finish it out. Sha -da 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 I go back to a little swing. So the last thing we do goes one and two and two and two. One, two, three, and da 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 Pull that heel. Big brush heel shuffle heel step. Heel, big brush toe. So you can go back to that toe. Oh, is it shaking a little? I'm sorry if it's shaking. So that last one goes one e and a two and three e and four and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four. Mm. So this whole thing sounds like this. Floor mark right there that's not helping me with my shuffle. Is uh, that too no, fast? You know what? They actually just said there was a very, very small earthquake in North Carolina. So the floor moved. It was not you. It did. Absolutely. Yeah. The USGS yeah. just got in touch with me. Um, <laughs> that's right. Are we done? That's you want to do it again? Beautiful. Oh, that's a beautiful. Oh, stop. 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 Um, no, it's are, we, are we doing it again or are we done? Do it again. One more time. Okay. One, two, three. Try up tempo. Here we go. Up tempo. Here we go. Ready? Yes. One. Two. Sorry. I don't know what's. Oh, uh, because my floor's coming up. Anyway. That was nice. Stop. I Stop. love it. Stop. It's just a little warm up step. I like it. I will tell you the truth. You know who told me to do that? Who? My wife. She goes, ah. that's my favorite step. So you should do that. Because I'm like, do I do my trick step, the LG? Do I do what do I do? I just thought I would do that. You know, Mark, that's another thing that is unique about you and I. We are both male professional tap dancers married to female professional tap dancers. True. It's true. Yeah. I know, right? It is an exclusive club. Us, Steve Z. Uh, I don't remember who else. There's a, there's a few of us. Who else but, is married to a professional tap dancer? Uh, I don't know. Because we'll have, figure, we'll have to figure out who else. Raymond and Orialis, but she's not just a. No, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. For another shirt, right. tell me who else who is married. I'm kidding. No, there's no other shirt. We're done with the giveaway. <laughs> what else? What else you got? It is time. Hey, bonjour, Camille. Camille from France just uh, checked in with us. Comment ça va? Would you like to hear Americans speak French badly? That's what we're going to do. For yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so it is time for a rapid wrist. This is going to be oh. 10 questions. All of these questions have generally one or two word answers. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. One, what tap shoes do you wear? A Miller and Ben sport tap. Two, taps tight or just a little bit loose? Oh, tight. I like tight. Three. Favorite song to tap dance to? Oh my God. You get one song, don't even try to play with me. What? Uh, uh, Diana Krall's Blue Skies. Woo! Favorite composer? <laughs> no, I can't, okay. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. There's two of them, but it's for the same reasons. Dave Brubeck and Sting. And the reason is they both do different time signatures. They both mess with the time and it's so, uh, I try to tap to shape of my heart from staying and let me know how that goes. Mm. Do you count? And I, we all know the answer now. Do you count in four or in eight? If you're in four well, here's five? the thing. Like when I'm dealing with hoofers, like on tap, totally tap, all fours. Yep. But yep. most dancers like who aren't educated with this way, they'll count in eight. So sometimes I'll do that. But generally I want to kind of transition them to fours. Favorite tap dancer to watch who is no longer with us? Oh, honey. Favorite living tap dancer to watch? Um, okay. 
I love, uh, they're all girls. I love Jeannie Hill because she makes oh. me smile. I love Sarah Reich because she's ridiculously good. And I had a huge crush on a woman from Boston named Julia Boynton, who I mm -hmm. thought was just gorgeous. So I love, I will watch them tap all day. I'll watch Sarah. I'll, I'll watch them all. I'll watch them all. I love them. Yep. Uh, favorite choreographed tap piece you've ever seen or done? Well, that's easy. I did a, I did a show of my tap company out in LA called Seal with a Kiss. And it was based on all the music by Seal. So it was Kiss from a Rose. It was Whirlpool. Mm. It was all the stuff. So it was a, it was, it was a story about this guy who ends up losing a girl, but whatever. So I love, I, I, that was one of my best thought out. I love that. That was a good piece. Mm. And then I did another one that was awful. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> really only another one? <laughs> I only did one other show and that was it for me. I did a, 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 an adaptation of the Red Shoes. It was, it, was, it was not good. It just, it was Aww. not good. We've I all tried those things that we just I don't try. Quite work the way they do in our head, right? <laughs> <laughs> Favorite, oh, what single tap performance that you've seen do you remember the most vividly? Tap performance that I've seen that I remember the most vividly? Yep, could be a film, um, could be a number, could be anything, show. That I've seen live? Yes. Um, I will tell you anything that Gregory did, mm. anything that Greg did when we were yep. working with him. I, I would watch him walk. I just think he was brilliant. I, I just, I just, but he was my idol, so it's, it's hard. I think you answered this already, but I'm gonna ask. You can go back in time and see any one tap performer or performance. Oh, what do you see? Slow as shot, shoe. The, yeah. the Colton Atkins taking a chance on love, the Ethel Waters yes. version, which is just ridiculously good. Best venue you've ever played? Carnegie Hall. Yes. Finally, how do you do the second step of the Shim Sham? What count do you start on? Four or one? Four. Thank right? you. I mean, Thank you. That's right. Well, no, because everything starts in dot, 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 eight, one, two, three, and one, and two, three, four, one. Yeah, four. <laughs> yeah. So. Before we go to my final question, I want to take just a moment. I want to thank Leah Koch, our marketing director for thank you, Leah. Tech Guru. She does so much. I want to thank the entire marketing team, Molly, Ali. Uh, right now, Sarah's been helping with marketing. She's also our fundraising coordinator. Um, I want to thank our interns, Emily and Ali. You guys are doing amazing work remotely. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank my set dresser, producer, and business manager, Jennifer Yonley. I do not want to thank the Boston Red Sox as a Cubs fan. Come on! That is They're no. Really suck this will year. not be. Come on. Yep. Whatever. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, continue checking in with us. I want to announce our next guest. Uh, okay. There you go. Am I back? Kind of. Good. Sunday we have Ida Excel, who's going to be amazing. Kind of. Uh, well, because your voice is like off. Up. It's off. Yeah. It's off? Keep going. Just keep... Oh, it's better now. Good. Oh, good. Final question. Mark, when you shuffle off this mortal coil, how do you want to be remembered as a tap artist? As a tap artist, I would love on my, my headstone to say, he moved. Hmm. He moved. I'm gonna I don't want to be in that right there. Huh? That's beautiful. That's gorgeous, yeah, well, Mark. Thank you. Wow. And by the way, ask Aya Deli who her very first tap teacher was. Oh, I will. Without a doubt. Um, I can't take responsibility for her. She was, she's, a, oh my God, she's so oh, brilliant. But I know. She's I mean. so brilliant. Mark, um, in all sincerity, you, you know, I, I know that I've told you this privately, and I'm going to tell you in front of uh, all of Instagram, I don't necessarily have uh, a lot of, male tap dancer friends especially that I consider dear dear friends that go beyond you know just loving you on the tap floor you are one of those people um I love you so much thanks for being a great friend thank you for employing me year after year I <laughs> really appreciate it well you know um, I love you seriously I mean I'll be serious you know I love you and you're always my first phone call when it comes well, to tap so it goes both ways for sure and I love that and by the way I love that you're doing this and for the people that are still around that are watching they're hanging in Thank you for doing this, because this is what we have now anyway. So this is our way to pass it on. 
It so um, make sure you get Sammy's address. Get a shirt size. I'm going to send her a long sleeve and just let me know what size. On it. All right. Thank you so very much, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Bye. Love you guys.